Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Tourism season is getting underway in eastern Kentucky as the weather continues to get warmer. WMT's Chandler Wilcox details how two cities are looking to build on past success. Not only is Corbin tourism in a new season, but they are in a new building downtown. We all were in agreement and felt that moving our office location into the heartbeat of, you know, downtown and of Corbin would uh, actually allow us to better serve our visitors to the area. Downtown Corbin continues to grow with local restaurants, so they are starting tourism season with Restaurant Week in late March to celebrate them. That is actually the first qualifier event for the World Food Championship. So this year, Corbin Tourism is sending three local chefs to compete in the World Food Championship in the categories of chef, burger, and steak. Like in Corbin, Manchester Tourism is looking to continue building on things that worked in the past, and for the City of Hope, that is music. We don't want to oversaturate that, and we've had a good balance of holding that music uh, where it's at. But yeah, it, it is, that is the staple of, it seems like in Clay County right now, is the music. There are other attractions and events Manchester Tourism is working to build a reputation for beyond music. We're very diverse. We have the ATV events now. We just did a Valentine's Day uh, wine sipping and uh, all local. Like, um, it, it was really cool. And then we just did the murder mystery show last night. So we're, we're broadening out and doing different things to reach different people. Corbin and Manchester Tourism are both part of an Eastern Kentucky group that received $350,000 from the American Rescue Plan to fund new tourism initiatives. In Manchester, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Corbin Restaurant Week will be taking place from March 20th to the 25th with multiple places creating a signature dish. If you see smoke rising from Cumberland Gap National Park this week, officials say don't be alarmed. A prescribed burn is scheduled on Dark Ridge just west of Sugar Run Overlook Road as early as Monday. Officials say these smaller intentional burns reduce the potential for wildfires. During the burn, officials say drivers may experience minor traffic delays on Sugar Run Overlook Road. The Wolf County Search and Rescue Team announced a suspension bridge on the Sheltowie Trace Trail was destroyed by a fallen tree. The team was dispatched to the area Saturday evening after hikers reportedly were stranded because of the destroyed bridge. They posted on their Facebook page advising people to plan accordingly when hiking in the Shell Tower Trace Trail. They do not expect the bridge to reopen anytime soon. Officials say the hikers headed back south on the Shell Tower Trace to exit the trail. More than 2,800 Kentucky Power customers were still without power this morning. Kentucky Power officials released a statement addressing their storm recovery efforts. They say more than 600 Kentucky Power employees are working to restore power today. And you expect restoration will be 95% complete by Monday evening. At its peak, more than 18,000 Kentucky Power customers were without power on Friday. Helpers from nine states have arrived to the bluegrass to begin chipping in to restore power to the Commonwealth. Kentucky Electric Cooperatives, which represents 26 co-ops across the state, says as of Sunday afternoon, more than 337, 330, 375 personnel have arrived from 58 sister co-ops. They include helpers from Florida, Illinois, Georgia, Louisiana, Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. In total, about 188,000 Kentuckians are still without power this evening as they head into their third night without electricity. Kentucky utilities say they're working to restore power as quickly and as safely as possible. What with so many downed trees and power lines, it's going to take some time. Officials say this is the third most significant event they've had in 20 years. Spokesperson for Kentucky Utilities Daniel Lowry says they've seen a lot of progress so far. The crews have been staying busy working 16 hour shifts to get the lights back on. We're working hard. Please be patient with us. You know, three or four days is way too long to be without power. We understand that and we know this is a multi-day restoration event and so we're trying to get folks back. KU has about 500 crews that have been working to restore power but starting Sunday they're adding even more crews. Troopers released new information on Sunday about a death investigation for a man who died in police custody. Kentucky State Police Troopers say the Ashland Police Department came across a man with an active warrant for his arrest. Troopers say the man ran from police but was later arrested after they found him entangled in a fence. The man started to complain of medical issues and was transported to a nearby hospital where 
he died. The man's body was sent to the medical examiner's office in Frankfurt for an autopsy. The Bell County Volunteer Fire Department responded to a structure fire early this morning. According to their Facebook post, they responded to that fire around 1230. They say the fire was located at Jensen Hollow right off Kentucky Highway 221. Multiple volunteer fire stations across the county assisted in putting out that fire. At this time, we still don't know if anyone was injured. A second Norfolk Southern train has derailed near Springfield, Ohio over the weekend, a little over a month after another train derailed carrying toxic materials in East Palestine. A shelter in place order was lifted Sunday morning after no hazardous materials were found on the 212 car train. Crews from Norfolk Southern, the EPA and A. Clark County has, Hazmat team examined the crash site Saturday night. But one Ohio senator says he's not yet satisfied with the company's latest response. I'm not entirely satisfied uh, because I want to know if there's some there are, so there are some sort of um, remnants of something that might have been in those cars. Those cars were mostly empty, um, but I want to know if there are any contaminants sort of left in those mostly empty cars. The latest derailment in Ohio comes as crews are still working to clear the toxic wreck of another Norfolk Southern train in East Palestine, about 200 miles away. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet is advising motorists of a closure tomorrow in Laurel County. The on-ramp at the intersection of Hal Rogers Parkway and Kentucky 192 westbound will be closed for pavement repair. That will start at 3 Monday morning. That's in just about four hours. It's expected to reopen at 5 p.m. Wednesday evening. After noticing the lack of basketball leagues in the area catered to children with special needs, one Knott County mom took matters into her own hands, joining other parents of kids with special needs to create a league of their own. WYMT's Alyssa Williams was in Knott County to capture one of their games and to speak to league organizers to learn more. Aiming to even the playing field for Eastern Kentucky kids with special needs. My nephew, uh, Braden, he was on a basketball team and there wasn't one for my son and his needs. This prompted Amber Jacobs of Knott County to reach out to other parents to see what could be done, connecting with Joshua Huff, who created a special needs baseball league a few years prior. So I actually started just picking up the phone to other basketball leagues around the country, and I was like, so how do you do this? So we kind of took our own and, and went it that way, the way we saw fit. And in January of this year, the Angels basketball team began playing at the Knott County Sportsplex, bringing in numerous players from surrounding counties. It's been really good to see these kids enjoy, in their own way, laughing together. So I'm going to cry, but it's just been really amazing. Jacob says many of these kids, like her son Dawson, who professionals said may never walk or talk, are showing everyone what they are truly capable of. I like to play that basketball. I like to play basketball. You do. Huff says this league can help the kids with socialization, physical activity, and other things. But watching these kids play can leave you forever changed, too. These kids are about as close as what the Lord can give us to, to having angels on earth. So it's really just uh, being a servant for them, and I, I'm proud to be able to do that. Proving that everyone deserves a shot. In Knott County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Those with the Angels basketball team say thanks to the Knott County Fiscal Court covering insurance costs and Appalachian Apparel for donating the jerseys. The players could join the team free of charge. Stick around, Cameron Aaron has a check the forecast after this break.